Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for uh, taking the time to uh, jump on this evening. We're going to get going here in just a few minutes. Uh, we want to give some time uh, for people to, to filter in and uh, get everything set up. with you shortly. Once again, welcome. Uh, as we get this started, it is a, a virtual public meeting with the Florida Department of Transportation. Uh, my name is Eric. I'm going to be uh, uh, hosting this alongside uh, the project team, Isaac Nizaru. Um, I'm going to let uh, the roll plot scroll through just to give everybody some time to, to get familiar with the, the project before we go into the presentation. Uh, so trying to try to enable you guys to take a, a gander at, at things uh, while we're waiting for people to queue up and, and roll in here. Right. See, so yeah, I'll just give this, uh, give you all the time to, to get coordinated with the corridor. We'll get going in about five minutes, uh, right? Just about uh, 5.37, give or take. Let's uh, let everybody filter in. All right. Hello to those of you who uh, just just logged in. Uh, right now, we're just letting everybody get uh, caught up and signed in and make sure their audio works. Uh, hopefully, you can hear me. Uh, testing one, two, three. Uh, we're going to get going in about uh, three more minutes uh, right now, just running the, the project corridor for, for you all to get acquainted with the project. And we'll go into some more detail here in just a few. But hopefully, uh, Hopefully all is working. If you have any questions or don't have audio working, there's a question box in the bottom corner uh, to your uh, right uh, that expands out. I'll, I'll show you more how to work uh, the software here in just a bit, but uh, if, you're, if you're having any issues, by all means, use that, that question box to communicate with us and we'll do our best to get back to you. Uh, but just about uh, two more minutes and we'll get going uh, once everybody gets filtered in. Thanks again.
remember I over the last uh, few seconds of the scroll here. Uh, for those of you that just jumped on, uh, again, those of you that have been on, appreciate you listening to my, my intro here a couple of times, but uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, this is the, the project uh, uh, virtual public meeting for Central Avenue uh, to State Road 19 uh, from Golden Gem Drive to the south of uh, Palmetto Street uh, Road roadway uh, and resurfacing improvements in, in Lake County and Umatilla. So we let this uh, just tick down here, last few slides, and then uh, we'll get underway. Again, we'll go through this kind of block by block in a, in a bit, but uh, it's nice to be able to take some time and actually look at what we're uh, about to discuss in lieu of the in-person public meeting. And thank you all for, for working through the technology here. Right. So uh, how we're going to start in the, 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 the process of this evening, uh, we're actually going to take a few minutes. I'm going to teach you how to use the software that we're on if you've never used it before. Uh, if you have used it, I'll uh, maybe show you a, a quick tip or trick, uh, whether you're uh, on a desktop or on a mobile. Uh, then uh, you can turn it over to the, the project manager, uh, Nizru Isaac, uh, for him to explain things a little bit, and then uh, I'll come back to me. Uh, we'll, we'll give you the full project presentation uh, and then open the floor for question and answers. So uh, it shouldn't take too much of your time. Again, thank you all for, for uh, logging on this evening or, or this afternoon. Um, but uh, we're, we're here until uh, seven if you guys have the questions. And if uh, if we get all your answers uh, as quick as we can, we're, we're, we're happy to do that as well and uh, let everybody go back to the families uh, even earlier. So. Um, yeah, we're, we're thankful and want to be mindful of it, uh, but we'll get going here. So, how do you use GoToWebinar? Um, so, uh, really want to provide some information about uh, how to use this on the desktop and on the smartphone. Uh, so, on your if you're on a desktop, uh, you should have a, a small toolbar with a few buttons uh, to the top right of your screen. Uh, so, you can simply click the orange arrow at the top and expand that toolbar. Uh, if you're on a mobile device, uh, you can tap this, the screen uh, and this, the display will actually show the same options at the top of your, your mobile device. Uh, this display uh, will uh, show the control panel and it'll enable you to, to ask a question or download project files uh, and really engage with us or, or, or the tools that we're providing you all today. Uh, so to download project files, uh, including a, a comment form, um, if you if you want to provide a comment uh, at a later time, uh, you can actually download one uh, there. So in the center of the screen on the desktop, you can see that, or the uh, the file uh, icon in mobile. Uh, and then uh, on mobile, clicking that little uh, file icon, it'll actually display the, the list of files. Uh, so for those of you that are calling in, all project files as well as this presentation uh, will be available on the project website. Uh, uh, that will be provided later in the presentation. Uh, that should be all up in a, in a couple of days. Uh, so finally, uh, if you have a question or a comment that you want to make about the project, that's ultimately why we're here. We want to engage with you all uh, on the ground. Uh, and you're able to do that uh, through the, the box at the, the bottom of the, uh, the control panel on desktop or uh, by pressing the question mark on uh, your mobile device and uh, entering it at the bottom of the uh, the screen there. Um, so again, for the, the, those calling in, uh, we'll provide contact information for the FDOT project manager uh, later on in the presentation so you can uh, engage with us uh, digitally or through a phone call as well. All right, and with that, I'm going to turn it over to our uh, project manager, uh, Nazar Isaac, and uh, he'll get us going. Isaac. Thank you, Eric. Uh, welcome to the virtual 
public information meeting for resurfacing projects along Central Avenue, Stero 19, stretching from Gordon Gem Drive to South of Palmetto Street. We appreciate you taking time to learn about the project and provide feedback for us. Uh, like Eric said, uh, my name is Nazir Isaac. Um, I'm the FDOT project manager for this project. With me tonight, um, I have uh, other FDOT uh, and consultant staff working on this project. The webinar will be recorded and will be available to watch on demand by uh, September 23rd, 2020, by going to the webpage for the project on our Central Florida website, www.cflroads.com. It's www.cflroads.com. And we'll, we'll put that uh, website on the screen. You can see it during presentation too. Um, we are also have provided a PDF of the presentation that can be downloaded to your computer during the webinar. You can find it under handouts on the menu to the right of your screen. Also found in that section are comment forms um, that you can download for later use. Please note that all attendees will be in listen only mode throughout the meeting. We ask that you type any question you have into the question box that appears on the right side of your screen. In just a few minutes, we will begin presentation that provides an overview of the project following the presentation. We'll answer questions that have been, you know, submitted through the question box. A moderator will read each question aloud, and it will be directed to the appropriate team member to address the question. We'll do our best to answer each question. If your question is not answered here, please reach out to us by phone or by email after the meeting. Again, like Eric said, the information for you to reach out to be provided during presentation. If you are listening to this webinar by phone do, and you do not have access to a computer, we ask that you also please contact us by phone or email and that information will, will be provided. The contact information, um, like I said, will be provided later in the webinar. We, all, we also uh, will send you a follow-up email uh, to everyone who registered for this webinar uh, with the contact information for the project. So the information will be provided during the webinar. We'll also send an email with the contacts so you can reach us out um, even after the webinar with any question or comment. With that, we'll now begin the presentation. All right, thank you very much, Isaac. Greatly appreciate it. Uh, so once again, thank you all for uh, for joining us this evening uh, to learn uh, more about the reconstruction and resurfacing projects on uh, on Central Ave uh, from State Road 19. Or I'm sorry, on State Road 19, uh, from Golden Gem Drive to uh, to South of Palmetto uh, Street. Uh, I, as we've uh, just met, uh, I, Mr. Uh, Nazir Isaac, uh, he's the project manager um, for this this project, uh, and also here uh, we have a number of other staff and consultants uh, to answer any questions you may have. Uh, but and and please feel free to uh, to pass those on as uh, any time throughout the presentation. So uh, as mentioned, the location is uh, Central Avenue or State Road 19, beginning at Golden Gem Drive, and continues about. Uh, 1.2 miles north uh, to just south of Palmetto Street in uh, Umatilla Lake County. So the uh, the intent of this project is to, to resurface the existing roadway as well as uh, narrowing the median between the travel lanes to uh, accommodate bicycle lanes. Uh, it also includes some sidewalk reconstruction, uh, some related drainage, signage, uh, and pavement marking improvements. So a, a typical repaving project has uh, three major goals. Uh, the first is to extend the life of the, uh, the pavement. And uh, while the pavement on the, uh, the corridor may look in decent shape, uh, surprisingly, it was last resurfaced in 1985, uh, so uh, quite some time ago. Uh, so part of our study uh, process includes taking a, a core throughout the uh, 
the project area, and the majority of these cores were, were cracked to the base. Uh, so what that means is that we essentially have to repair this uh, roadway as quickly as possible. Uh, as the longer we wait, uh, the more costly it will be. Uh, and also, uh, anytime we complete a repaving project, it, it presents the opportunity to look at uh, other items that, that can be completed in line with the project work. Uh, so this is the second two uh, to elements of our, our repaving scope. So the, the second thing is uh, enhancing corridor safety, and the third is uh, addressing any ADA improvements. Uh, with that, uh, there's some constraints with the repaving project, uh, and the uh, proposed changes we're, we're presenting here today uh, don't mean further uh, improvements cannot be made. Uh, one of those improvements is, is uh, we recognize that there, there may be some questions about Lake County's long-term vision to construct the trail uh, along a portion of uh, State Road 19 in this area. Uh, this project uh, is addressing the immediate need to rehabilitate the asphalt uh, and the pavement to ensure that there is a, a safe and functional roadway. Um, but the, the trail project is still in early planning, uh, and, and we realize that uh, to make this happen, it would likely need uh, additional right-of-way along the corridor and, and pushing construction out uh, at least several years. Uh, yeah, so uh, currently the bike lanes on northbound, uh, currently uh, bike lanes are on uh, northbound Central Avenue from uh, County Road 452 in Eustis uh, to the beginning of our project uh, limits at Golden Gem Drive. Uh, additionally, there's a small trail that runs adjacent to the Umatilla Library on the east side of Central Avenue. Uh, from Bulldog Lane to East Collins Street. So what we're proposing is uh, implementing bike lanes uh, northbound and the south and southbound throughout the limits of the project. Uh, so these bike lanes will enable cyclists to navigate more easily throughout the heart of town now. Um, and should the trail project move forward, it will enable cyclists to have options in the heart of the city uh, in the future. Um, with centers of activity, it's, it's not uncommon for multiple options to be available. Uh, so it will, in the future, give cyclists uh, or casual cyclists uh, and pedestrians the ability to enjoy a trail system at a more relaxed pace, uh, while those quickly traveling through, uh, through town can do so uh, more quickly on uh, on-road bike lanes. So what does the, the project actually start to look like? Uh, we'll pull back a bit. Um, and there are two overall design sections. I can go to the next slide, thank you. Uh, two overall design sections for uh, Central Avenue in, in Umatilla. Uh, the first is on the south side of the project, and it runs from uh, Golden Gem Drive uh, to Robert Street. Uh, here, the roadway is a, a little bit more narrow uh, than the remaining northern segment, uh, but we're still able to provide uh, seven-foot bike lanes uh, while maintaining the existing travel lanes. The, the second design, uh, it's on uh, Central Avenue, running from uh, Robert Street uh, all the way up to Golden Gem Drive. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, <laughs> the northern end of the, the corridor. Uh, and here we're, we're able to be uh, maintain the existing parking. I know that was a concern for the city, uh, but we still have been able to add uh, seven foot bike lanes that include a three foot buffer, uh, indicating to cyclists the potential for conflict presented by uh, unexpected uh, car door openings. Uh, there are more improvements being suggested for the corridor, and uh, for that, we'll take a look at the plans block by block. Uh, so throughout these next few slides, I'll slow down a bit uh, to give you uh, the time to review the plans. Um, but starting at the south end of the corridor at Golden Gem Drive, uh, the roadway will be resurfaced. Um, so the pedestrian curb ramps will be reconstructed to meet current American with Disabilities Act, or ADA standards. Uh, and that includes uh, detectable warning pads with surface indicators. Uh, but we've also added bike lanes on both the northbound and southbound lanes, as you'll uh, recall. Again, just uh, letting you guys take these in here. Uh, the second stretch uh, moving north, we'll look at uh, intersections of uh, Wofford Street and Lakeview Street. Uh, so in addition to the resurfacing and curb ramp reconstruction, uh, bike lanes throughout the remainder of the corridor will include a, a three-foot buffer. And again, this uh, ensures cyclists are riding safely outside of the uh, car door conflict zone.
So at the uh, intersection of Mabane Street and uh, Turtle Run, uh, the design features continue. Uh, but here on this, this slide, I'll highlight the curb extensions at the corners of both streets. Uh, these are, are here to improve uh, intersection safety by ensuring drivers and vehicles aren't parked in, uh, in driver's sight lines. And moving on to the corridor uh, bordered by Lake Umatilla and uh, Lake Enola. Uh, on this slide, I'll, I'll highlight that uh, the updated parking uh, that we've seen on previous plan sections will we'll continue to see moving north. Uh, and again, to ensure that there is no conflict, that that buffer uh, exists between the bike lane and these, these parking spots. And uh, on this slide, we'll see uh, similar improvements as we begin to, to enter the center of, of Umatilla. You can see uh, a couple of uh, locations there on the map. Again, just giving you all time to, to actually see what's going on. I don't want to race through these on you. And then as we uh, enter the city center uh, at the intersections of, of Cassidy Street and Harris Street, uh, we can also see that the bus stops have been approved. Uh, and this exists throughout the corridor as well. Uh, space for buses has been more clearly defined and uh, concrete pads have been added for, for waiting riders where needed, uh, again, throughout the entire corridor. All right, and then moving a little further north around the intersections of uh, Lone Star Street, uh, we see the de design elements uh, we previously discussed uh, continue on. And then at the uh, the five point intersection of uh, Ocala Street, Umatilla Boulevard, and Bulldog Lane, uh, we're closing sidewalk gaps and including uh, ADA compliant or ramps throughout the intersection. Uh, so on the main island created at the fork of uh, Central Avenue and uh, in Umatilla, um, you can actually see that we've added additional sidewalks and additional crossing locations uh, that enables pedestrians to navigate the intersection uh, in any way they desire. So a, a huge pedestrian improvement there. And then finally, at the northern end of the uh, Central Avenue uh, project corridor uh, at Palmetto Street, uh, we see similar elements continue uh, to the terminus. Uh, so the project is currently in the design phase through uh, summer of 2021. Uh, the construction phase is uh, currently scheduled to begin in uh, early 2022 uh, at an estimated cost of about $3 million. Uh, the improvements will be constructed uh, entirely within the uh, existing right-of-way and therefore will not require any uh, property acquisition. Uh, so we welcome your questions and comments and, and there are several ways that you can get involved uh, to provide feedback on this project. So you can either uh, provide a comment during uh, or in the question window during the meeting. Uh, you can do so right now if you wish, uh, or you can uh, download a comment form uh, on your computer and send it back to uh, the address shown on the form. Uh, third, you can uh, contact uh, the project manager directly. Uh, and to do so, uh, you can reach uh, Nazaru Isaac by email at Nazaru Isaac, or I'm sorry, Nazaru.Isaac at DOT dot state dot fl dot us and i'll uh, read that out if you're joining on the phone it's n a z i r u dot i s a a c at d o t dot state s t a t e dot fl dot 
address. Uh, or you can reach uh, Mr. Uh, Isaac by phone at 386-943-5547. Again, that number is uh, 386-943-5547. Finally, you can visit the, the website for the project by going to cflroads.com uh, and searching the project number uh, 4379-38-1. Uh, one more time, it's uh, 4379-38-1. And you can enter that project number in the search bar uh, and that will help you locate the project page. Uh, public participation at this meeting is uh, solicited without regard to uh, race, color, uh, national origin, age, sex, religion, disability, or, or family status. Uh, so should you wish to express uh, any concerns regarding FDOT compliance with Title VI, uh, please contact either Jennifer Smith, the District 5 Title VI coordinator, or Jacqueline Paramore, the State uh, Title VI coordinator, using the contact information shown here. Uh, contact uh, details are also uh, also posted in the uh, material online. And with that, uh, I want to thank you all once again for attending this virtual public meeting uh, and encourage you to uh, contact us with any questions or comments. Uh, we'll now answer some questions and, and we'll get uh, Mr. Uh, Isaac back on the line here. Uh, we'll answer some questions you may have. Uh, but feel free uh, for the, the next few weeks to uh, pass on any questions that may pop in your head. Uh, as I know, we're just presenting the information for the first time and things tend to uh, take a little bit to saturate. Uh, so download uh, both the contact forms and the, the, the presentation uh, in the, the handout section on the, uh, the right of the screen. Uh, and with that, we'll, uh, we'll open the floor to some questions. Let me just get those queued up here so I can... Uh, you guys going? All right, Isaac, if you're ready to go and you want to join us, we've got a couple of questions here. All right, uh, so the first question we ha have is, uh, um, will the, the uh, bump outs have any landscaping? Yes, they will have landscaping. Great. Um, we do have uh, the landscape architect on this project and uh, we are doing landscaping uh, design that will be um, coordinating with the city and the bump outs is one of the areas that we'll be putting in the landscaping. Great, thank you. Uh, second question we have is, uh, do you have current uh, bicycle LOS and volumes? I'm gonna assume that's level of service, but uh, I'll let you answer that. Yes, as part of our scope, we look into um, the bicycle usage in the area. Um, I don't have the number here, but that's something that um, uh, I can go back and, and, and um, uh, look in the scope and uh, if, if, if anybody needs more information for that. But that's something we look into in the time we do a design. We look into, um, we design for uh, roadway users. Uh, we look at the pedestrian numbers, pedestrian usage of the road and, and, and bicycles too. Great. Uh, the next question uh, we have is, uh, it looks like you're eliminating uh, parking in front of the post office on uh, State Road 19. Um, I know we've adjusted some stuff. I don't know the, the specifics of that. I don't know if you can clarify. Okay. Um, with that, um, the, the, the way we design these parkings, I mean, uh, we do have uh, criteria that we use. One of the things we do is we try to eliminate some of the parkings because, uh, especially at the side streets, uh, you need to have a side distance and you don't want cars parking to the side street if someone is coming from that street. And so that's why you can see in some of the areas, but that's something we can revisit. Um, so we'll go back and look at the post office and look at you know the parking they have today and what we are proposing and revisit our design. Great. Um, and then uh, this question is uh, maybe a little more directed towards me, but uh, I don't know, Isaac, if you can uh, answer there. 
uh, is will there be an opportunity to safely view uh, the role plots in person? Uh, so I know we've got them online, they're, they're full resolutions, so you can zoom all the way down to uh, the smallest little little uh, rock on the ground. Uh, but Isaac, I know you've been coordinating with a few folks. Oh, did we freeze? We might have lost Isaac. All right. <laughs> well, we're getting him back on. Uh, the fun of uh, the fun of, of virtual meetings, and uh, I know we've got spectrum issues all over the country today. Uh, so, yeah, for that question, uh, I can answer that. I do know we have the the role plots uh, digitally uh, on made available for uh, for you guys, and, and again, you can zoom in uh, pretty detailed there uh, to provide comments uh, at a future time. And Justin, I don't know if we've, uh, if you want to jump on while we're waiting for Isaac to, to get back. Uh, we have a question uh, about what uh, what those curved ball bots are actually for. Um, yeah, I'm uh, sorry. I, I, I lost my audio. I don't know what happened. It's all yeah. good. I can't dance. Yes, it's great. Uh, so I was just asking uh, Justin uh, it, about the the purpose of the uh, the ball bounce uh, or the, the the concrete curb uh, extensions. Yeah, Justin, feel free to jump in. Yeah, the uh, the purpose of the curb extensions is to give a v visual cue to drivers to help slow them down, and also to better define the parking lane so that it can't be accidentally used as a through lane for traffic. Yes, because the way the way the parking is designed today is like a, an open lane. Um, anybody can even drive on that parking right now. Uh, but the way we do our design is we put in uh, those bob outs. Um, that's that's one of the goal is is uh, yeah, like Great. Justin just said. So nobody drives uh, thinking it's a lane. Uh, Great. Uh, so next question I have is, uh, will the intersection at uh, State Road 19 at Bulldog Way reflect uh, school crossing zones? Yes, that's um, that's one of the things we have discussed with the, the city. Uh, I, we actually forwarded that to our uh, traffic our operation de department. Um, they're looking, they're doing like a study uh, analysis at the Bulldog uh, intersection. And uh, school crossing is one of the things that they're considering. They'll come with the recommendations. And when those recommendations come back, um, depending on um, where we'll be with this project, they can either be included in this project or um, they can be included in uh, another project under traffic operation. But they're doing a study right now. Um, uh, and that was what they requested from the city. So yes, we are looking at that intersection. Great. And uh, guys, or, or everyone, these are great questions and uh, feel free to, to submit more. Again, you can do so on the, uh, the right side of your screen in the question box at the bottom of the, the control panel there. Um, the next question is uh, asking, do you have a graphic for the, uh, the buffered uh, bike lanes or in something with a, a closer view? Oh, uh, you, you mean um, um, the raw product? Uh, I believe they're just asking for just a, a better understanding of the the buffered bike lanes. So I don't know if the section. Yeah, yeah the, the, the 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 one of the end outs, which is uh, I believe is uh, just spray board. That's the raw route, the the raw product. Um, if you're viewing that on the computer, if you zoom in, um, you can see one of the things we added to that is not just uh, our design. But we also added the pavement markings so you can see clearly the pavement markings for parking you can see the pavement markings for the buffered bike lane too uh and and other you know traffic uh lanes great and uh, to the person that asked that if we didn't quite get uh, the understanding of your question feels please feel free to, to shoot another one in um uh, next question is uh, how long will written public comments be accepted uh, normally we do these meetings to get the public uh, feedback and 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 but we are we we are still designing um, 
and and we take uh, public uh, uh, comments all the time. Um, uh, it, it doesn't stop. I mean, um, we do encourage people to go ahead and uh, submit comments uh, as soon as possible because what happens is um, we have a schedule and we don't want to get comments to implement some of the things uh, uh, late in the schedule. So the sooner the better, but we never stop uh, taking public comments. Great. Um, and then uh, this person is asking, uh, what is the uh, the process for getting uh, master arms at, at Bulldog in uh, State Road 19? Yes, that's uh, that's one of the question actually that I was asked. Um, I was asked by the city, and I took it to the management and the um, traffic operation. Uh, the the process is uh, anytime you establish uh, um, you you want to start a project like that. Uh, you need to go through your MPO, um, and the MPO will submit the projects uh, for 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 that area and priority for each project. Uh, that's that's how you you that's that's the best way to um, ask for a project around the area. Great. Um, and then uh, next question uh, is: uh, Will all, all questions and answers from everyone be posted on uh, on the website? Uh, can you repeat the question, please? Uh, will, will all questions and answers from everyone be posted on the website? I think that's more directed towards me than, than you, perhaps. It, it is, I think. Yes. Yeah. Uh, we're in this back and forth. It's, uh, you know. uh, so this whole recording or this whole presentation will be recorded, including uh, the, the back and forth that we're having question and answers. Um, so that'll be on the website. Uh, I suppose that we could get those those typed up for you as well, um, to a degree, if you need it. Uh, I, I'd say, um, and, and Isaac may, may echo this, if there's a specific question that we have a concern here, feel free to, to email us or uh, contact us in some way. Yes, uh, like we just, we said from the beginning, if, uh, let's say you ask a question and uh, you still need a follow-up or more clarification, uh, you feel free to send an email. Uh, and for those questions that will be sent by email or um, fill in a, a comment form, uh, those will be um, will be uh, providing written answers, um, responses um, via email. Uh, or, so I would encourage, uh, if you still need follow-ups on your questions, feel free to go ahead and, and send them by email. Great. Um, I, I want to thank you all for being super engaging. This is, this is why we do these. And uh, we've got a few more questions. And by all means, let them, let them keep coming if, if you have them. Um, next question is, uh, in the plan, is uh, FDOT shrinking our medians? Uh, and if so, by how much? Um, the, the, the medians, uh, are uh, getting shrunk by about uh, three to four feet on each side, um, but um, the medians will remain pretty much the way they are today. What I mean by that is uh, we 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 are not taking out any landscaping, we are not closing any uh, median openings or any access. Everything will remain the way it is today. They just be will be shrunk about three to four feet from each side. But everything else will be the way it is today. Great. Uh, and then another question here pertaining to, and this may be the last question, uh, pertaining to the bike lanes. Uh, and this person is asking, will there be uh, audible pavement markings next to the, the bike lanes? Audible pavement markings. Oh, that's uh, that's something I uh, can uh, uh, take back uh, to our uh, traffic design engineer. Um, and that's why we get these comments. Uh, we take them back to, I'm a roadway engineer, I'm the project manager. Uh, any comments to do with the roadway, that's something we can go back and look at. Anything to do with the traffic design like that is something I'll take back to the um, our traffic engineer and discuss and see if we can, we can make that change. Fantastic. Um, well, with that, uh, unless uh, somebody has any other questions, it's been a minute or two before we've had one come in. Um, you know, tap dance and do the, the goodbye while uh, if, if you have one, <laughs> pass it on. Uh, but on behalf of myself, 
uh, Mr. Isaac here uh, on the project team, as well as Justin and, and the rest of the folks that joined us. I want to say uh, thank you all uh, very much for, for joining us this evening. Um, it has been a pleasure. Uh, and uh, right on right on, on time, we've got one last question here. Uh, it is, uh, how are bike lanes the priority issue if you don't have uh, the current usage by bicycles? Is, is the question being asked. Um, we do have, uh, um, I, I mean, we do have some, we, we do have, we don't have bike lanes today, um, but we do have people, uh, bicyclists going through the area. Um, and the, the department go on each project we do, uh, you know, we have different programs and different projects with different objectives, but our main goal has always been to provide facilities um, that can uh, accommodate or can be used by all roadway users. So every time we design a project, we have to think about pedestrians around the area. The area like that in Umatira uh, is, is, is uh, becoming more and more urban, um, especially the area where this project go through. So we design for all users, uh, bicyclists being one of them. So we always look for opportunities to make improvements if we can uh, and provide uh, uh, things like a bike lane. Great, and we actually have a, a comment from our, uh, or one of the bike lane uh, and coordinators, I don't wanna say engineer, I'm sorry, uh, Chad Lingenfelder. He says, if you do not have bike lanes, then uh, there will be little usage. If you add bicycle lanes, uh, which is the vision of, of Numatilla, uh, then you will see an increase in usage. So thank you, Chad, for one, being on the call and, and two, chiming in with that as well. Um, so we have uh, one more comment and then a, a question as well. Uh, the comment is uh, saying eight feet off the medians uh, could be half or more shrinkage. Um, has the city been informed of that? Yes, the city has been informed. Um... Actually, we are working with the city right now. Uh, the city has been uh, informed about the project. They have seen the project, um, um, and we are working with the city on that. Yes. Great. Great. Um, and with that, I think I think we're at a good good closing place. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. One more question coming. This is great, guys. This is great. Um, uh, what are the widths of uh, the current lanes? I think he means the road, or I would imagine he means the oh, road. Oh, the, the width of the current lanes are um, uh, 12 feet. Um, but uh, based on our criteria we have right now, uh, those lanes, and, and Justin, can you jump here? And um, because Justin is doing the design. Can you talk about that? Yes, the existing lanes are 12 feet. So two 12 foot lanes in either direction, and then a nine foot uh, parking lane in either direction is the current configuration. Great. Thank you. Um, and then uh, this person is uh, asking here on, on Cassidy Street on the corner of uh, Garant Street, excuse me if I'm mispronouncing that, uh, we will have a left turn uh, or will we have a left turn uh, on the stoplight in front of City Hall? I can repeat that as you to make that a little more clear. Uh, do are we talking about um, whether we are maintaining the uh, the existing left turn? I guess we do not change any access any turn lane you have today will still be there. Great. Um, and this next question is: uh, How will bicycle lanes be buffered from traffic and parking? The way uh, our criteria, the way we do, if you have a uh, parking. Um, Adjusting to the bike lane, we 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 do uh, we don't do a standard uh, four feet or five feet bike lane. We do a buffered bike lane. That means you have a parking, um, and then you have a buffer of about three feet, um, and then you 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 have about four feet, and then the the traffic lane. Great. I don't want to. I don't want to wrap up too too prematurely this time. We, we've got it a couple times, so we'll, we'll we'll let it uh, let you all get your questions in if you have them. 
appreciate you working with us in the uh, the virtual setting. Uh, I think we're all we're all still still growing collectively. You guys on your side and, and us over here, we appreciate it. Uh, this question is uh, the the left turn lane has been a priority for residents for years, uh, and DOT has uh, not not or refused to address it previously. Uh, but unknown why bike usage is addressed. Uh, the left turn, uh, is this a follow-up question? Uh, I'm trying to, uh, if that person can can respond to the intersection that they're, they're speaking to, that'd be great. Um, don't, if it is a follow-up question, I'm not following it. And we'll, we'll, we'll come back to your question here in a second. Please let us know what, uh, oh, Garant. Um, so the left turn lane at Garant has been a priority for residents for years. Um, and DOT has not or refused to address it to previous or previously, um, but unknown bike usage is addressed and they're asking why. Okay, um, that's, uh, um... That's something that we need to go back and look. Uh, like I said, we have uh, our traffic design engineer, we have our traffic operation engineer. Um, normally when we introduce things like left turn or any access, uh, we have to do a study. Um, we have to look at the traffic. Um, that's, that's something we can go back and talk to. Um, talk to our traffic uh, department and, and, and see if they can look into. And it's something that sometimes we would, uh, depending on the time and everything, we may uh, be able to look at it uh, using this project or um, even we may look at it using a different project, but that's something that needs to be looked into. And thanks for the comment. Um, we'll go back and look at it. Uh, Justin, did you take a note of that? Yes, I've taken a note. And I, we have the record for all these comments as well, I believe. Okay. Yeah, great. And thank you for uh, clarifying to that person that, that asked a question. Um, again, we're working with the, the, the fun new world we all live in. Uh, next question is uh, putting bike lanes between parking and traffic is old tech and dangerous. Uh, and they're just uh, requesting that we please do not do that. Uh, this is, uh, um, uh, again, this is something we can, uh, but the way we do these projects is we use our standards. Uh, these are the standards we have been using everywhere. And um, anytime you put in a parking, um, a bike lane, uh, when where there's a parking, you do a buffered bike lane. This is a wide seven foot buffered bike lane. Um, like I said, we these are the standards that we have been using um, everywhere. So that's something that can be looked into, but this project is being designed by standards uh, that we have been using on all other projects. Great. Next question here. Um, the question is, or it's a statement again, I'm sorry. Uh, the city would like to see turn signals at uh, Cassidy uh, and State Road 19. To see, can you say um, that again? Turn signals. Yeah, like uh, there was a question before that. Um, what's the process of uh, uh, requesting a signal? Uh, like I said, um, uh, as far as uh, like like we explained from the beginning, the pavement uh, in that area uh, hasn't been uh, resurfaced for like 35 years. It's getting really bad. You can't see it by your eyes, but it's really cracked and it needs to be fixed now. That's the objective of this project. Uh, uh, the, the signal for that intersection is not part of this project, but that's something, uh, like I said, I discussed, uh, I think the city brought it up to me. I discussed with the traffic operation uh, and our management. I can go back and talk to them again, but the process that uh, I was told is uh, you can ask you for that project to add the signal there through your MPO. Great. Um... Another uh, question here uh, on the second stoplight at 450 and Bulldog Lane um, for the left turn, could FDOT put sticks or something to stop cars from getting uh, the left turn and then 
pulls right and goes straight instead of turning. So I think they're they're trying to say people that are changing their mind um, at that intersection maybe a maybe a problem. Yeah, I mean uh, things like that uh, we can look at. Uh, we'll go back. Um, uh, we'll we'll look at that. That's something we Great. can look into and see if there's anything we can do. Great. All right. And thank all of you uh, for I'm trying to interpret as best as I can here your your questions and the the sentiment. So. Uh, thank you, and, and I think most of you are doing a good job of correcting me if, I, if I'm not. Um, let me see here. Uh, so to follow up on the, the Garant signal uh, in that left turn lane, um, in person saying it's been tabled at every meeting, yet it is important to us, uh, and we get the same answer. Um, it was the, the biggest question at the last meeting about this project, and, and we got the same answer. So, um, yeah. Um, any, any final thoughts on that one, and then I think we can probably follow up or, or ask that person to, to follow up via email. Um, we'll, we'll continue the conversation on that offline, and I definitely want to address it. Oh, okay. You 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 mean the the question about the signal? Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. Um. I, I'm I'm that question actually came from the city uh no long time ago. Um. I don't know which meeting they're referring to that was discussed and nothing happened. Um, this is the first public meeting I've done, but I've been meeting with the city. They have brought up that uh, issue for the signal. I've talked to the traffic operation office. Uh, and again, like I said, uh, we do have different projects, uh, different programs. Um, then the, the, this is a maintenance project and the main goal is the pavement. But we do have different projects. Uh, we do di do different. Uh, the project, in order to put a signal, you need to do a study. You need to look at the traffic. You need to look at the need for that signal, uh, because um, and we'll, we'll, we'll take it back to the traffic operation office. They will look at it. But if if it's something that we feel like we can do, we we we, we do it. But if it's something that uh, um, the city is asking to be done, that they may have to go through the MPO. Again, like I said before, but it's something that we're going to look into in, in detail and see. Great. Yeah. Um, and then uh, circling back to the, uh, the standards that you mentioned for, for bike lanes um, between parking and active traffic, uh, this person is asking if you have data uh, on if there is an increase or decrease in accidents. Um, I think they're talking about whether or not the parking is on one side or the other. Oh, I do not have that data right here, but that's something that we can we can go back and look um, because we do have uh, uh, like I said before these standards we use them uh, on on some of the roads we just put in the parking I mean the the bike lane uh, we have all kind of bike lanes different widths and and we have some of them where we put adjust into the parking so we'll go back and look at it we Great. can we, yes we can look at that data. Um, and then uh, kind of building on that, uh, the same person is asking, have the, the trails planners met with FDOT and offered insight or uh, consideration on uh, if a trail can be incorporated into the bike lane? Yeah, we do. We do have uh, different offices. Um, we have a planning office. We have a model office. And like we said, there's a long term um, uh, plan for, for trail. And that uh, is actually worked out with our planning office and our model office. We don't do anything, we don't do these bike lanes without talking to them. So yes, they have been involved. They know that we are putting in the bike lanes uh, using our standard. Uh, and they know that uh, these bike lanes we are putting in today, we are trying, like I just said, we are trying to accommodate all the users. We are trying to accommodate bikers bike today to go through the area, but these do not affect the uh, future trail projects. Yeah, it's great. But yes, great we question. do. We do coordinate with them, and they know about the project. Great. We're just going to give it a, another minute or two for for y'all to let your fingers do the work on the keyboard. Thank you again for the, the great engagement. Um, that's why we come here. It's a, it should be a shame to do all this work and then not get uh, some feedback. So it's greatly appreciated. And give it a, 
a couple minutes here. I said to wrap it up too early. <laughs> And again, I'll, I'll just remind everybody while we're, uh, we're giving it a few minutes here that all these uh, documents are are in the uh, section to the, uh, the right of the screen, uh, so you can download them. And really get a, a good good understand. Uh, so just one one more question here. Uh, this person's uh, asking uh, or, or stating comment first and then question later. Uh, you're proposing major changes to the, the community, uh, yet we, we get told to wait on data or, or later studies to address the issues uh, citizens request. Um, are our issues important or is, is someone else's vision more important? Um, maybe just talk about the, the work you've done with the city over the past few years. I know there's been a lot of back and forth and, and good cooperation. Can, can you... Um... Can you read the question again or comment? Yeah, uh, it's in, uh, we're proposing major changes to the community, um, yet uh, we always get uh, told to wait on data or, or later studies to address the issues citizens request. Uh, and then the question is, uh, are our issues important or is someone else's vision more important? But no, all the issues are important. Uh, like I explained uh, from the beginning, we do have different programs uh, and different projects. Uh, this project right here um, is under the maintenance uh, program where we come in, we have to look at the pavement. Uh, this pavement, like I said, hasn't been um, rehabilitated or, um, for, for 35 years. Um, it doesn't look that bad when you look at it, but we got some few spots where we have to take the entire pavement, actually a few spots I think where we need to go all the way to the basement, uh, take the entire pavement. So we, we this the goal for this is to make sure we take care of this pavement today. And, and, and when we come in with these projects from different programs and priorities, we, 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 we tend to um, uh, try to, uh, come to do as much as we can. We have been in coordination with the city for, for a long time since we started this project. We have done a lot of coordination uh, with the city. And we do consider everything, we do prioritize. And that's why we're having these meetings. And based on your comments today, we'll go back, we'll talk to our management. Um, we may change some priorities. We may uh, uh, tweak our design here and there to make sure we accommodate. So we do it, um, but like I said, we have different projects. This is not the only project that we come in the area, every project we come up with, or some of the projects that go through your, um, your city or your county, through your MPO, we, we do use different projects to address different needs. So um, this is just one of them. But again, like I said, based on your comments, we'll go back and look at it. We'll talk to our management. We'll, we'll look at our priority again, and um, we'll, we'll, we'll address as much as we can. Great. But some of, the, some of the issues we are talking about, um, uh, if we don't have details, that's something we need to go back and do more research or if it's something that, for example, you cannot just put a signal, you need to go back and do a study. Uh, that's something that is done by our traffic op or office. Uh, we need to go back and talk to them. And, and, and like I said, some of them will be addressed using this project. Some of them may be addressing by using um, future projects or through MPO or by uh, creating another project to just do a signal, for example. So we do, um, we do address all the comments, it's just, uh, um, like I said, we, we prioritize, um, we use different projects and different programs, and this is just one of the projects that's going through the area, so. Great, yeah, and, and I encourage, uh, again, I encourage everybody that's got uh, more questions after we uh, hop off here uh, to follow up with us uh, via the email uh, or the, the, the phone number uh, that's on the screen now, and uh, might, might be better shared for a, a slightly different uh, conversation and I know I'm trying to, to channel your your voice as much as I can um, 
So by all means, please please do follow up, and we'll we'll do our best to to uh, communicate that way. All right, we'll just give it a just another minute or two here. Um, again, thank you all for for the great engagement. Um, Isaac, thank you for uh, fielding all my questions, or all, all of our questions. <laughs> yes, um, yes, we do. Uh, we Like I said, we go back and look at some of them and uh, yeah. do some more research and more analysis and, um, and and see what we need to do. Yeah, no, nowhere near as fun as a, a regular public meeting where we get to meet all you guys on the, the, the like in front of the documents, but we, uh, we greatly appreciate you working with us. It's been about three minutes since the last one came, and I'm going to give it a couple more. I, I want to make sure you guys have the opportunity to uh, to engage with us. So that's why we're here. Just another minute or two. All right, I think we're we're in a, we're in a safe place. Uh, if you're if you're furiously typing right now, I apologize. Uh, but again, feel free to to reach out to us directly. Um, thank you all. Uh, thank you, Isaac, for for. Uh, for answering all of our questions. Uh, and thank you all for, for taking the time this evening. Uh, I think at this point, we'll uh, turn it back over to, to you all, let you enjoy the, the rest of the evening with your families. Um, and uh, we look forward to uh, to helping get this project uh, up and running here in the coming years. So thank you guys very much. And uh, you can find this online in the next, uh, next few days. Have a good evening.